Welcome to this tutorial about the Computer-Based Instrumentation Unit. This video will describe the second of six instruments you can find in this unit. The Oscilloscope. You can access this function by clicking on this icon here once LVDAC is fully open. Let's take a look at the features of this function. On the top left are listed some functions for printing and color settings that will not be discussed in this video because more important features need to be seen. Don't forget to take a look at them to customize your oscilloscope as you want. Just under those options, you can find the single refresh button, continuous refresh button, auto scale, and memories button. These two buttons will become available as soon as one channel is set to a specific input. Here begins the important features of this function. First of all, the column to the right is where you set the input displayed by the oscilloscope. All eight channels work exactly the same way. First, select the input data you want to see on the oscilloscope by clicking on it here in the list. Then, just under, set the scale of this input to have it fully displayed on the scope. As you see, you can also reverse the signal and change the coupling as you want. Note that every important value of a channel is automatically shown at the bottom of the grid for quicker access. By default, every new curve always appears in the middle of the grid. You can move them up and down using the cursor here at the left side of the grid. Under those eight channels you get the display options, which include XY display and various settings like persistence and filtering. The Show option can be used to add some vertical or horizontal cursors and save memories to the current displayed curves. To put the current curve in memory, just click here on the M1 or M2 button. The Show Cursor data adds or removes the corresponding channel value under the grid here. And finally, the Time Base option is used to set the time scale on which the curves will be displayed. As you notice, there is also an option called Trigger. When using the software type, this option can be used to reduce the drifting of a curve, allowing the user to have a more precise view of the data and waveform. Simply select the channel you want to trig on, and then move this cursor up and down to set the trigger level. However, if you want to observe the transient state of a wave, you'll need to rely on the hardware trigger. In order to make it work, turn the power off, select the hardware type and the channel from which you want to see the transient state, then move the two green cursors to set the trigger level. Now go here on the top left and click the single refresh button. This sends a request to the software to automatically print the data of the selected wave on screen at the precise moment where the wave reaches the trigger level. Now all you have to do is bring back the power and observe the result. It is a very useful option for studying transient states of solid-state relays, thyristors, or various electrical circuits. I have already connected a thyristor single-phase AC power control circuit to show you a short demonstration of this oscilloscope at work. The first channel is the input voltage, the second one is the output voltage, or load voltage. Channel 3 is the current through the load, and channels 4 and 5 are the pulse signals sent to those two thyristors here. Once all channels are set, I move them up and down in a way that it will be easy to observe their specific waveforms. If you have a problem seeing every curve on the grid clearly, Try a different scaling for certain channels to reduce the space taken by the waveforms. Once ready, start the application. As you see, when I vary the firing angle of the thyristors, I get the real waveform of the output in real time. With up to eight channels at the same time, this function becomes very useful for studying and understanding basic and complex circuits. Don't forget to take a look at the settings here on the top left. That's it for the oscilloscope.